بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters in Islam we again ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm we Firstly, also thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to gather uh, on this uh, online platform and on this online community. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from that which is khair. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us success in saying that which is correct. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for any mistakes or any shortcomings that uh, we, we make. As has been announced, and it's been mentioned on the schedule, the title for today's lecture is in continuation of our first session that we had, uh, titled Being Upright While Young. And that was based on the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in which he mentioned, alayhi salatu wasalam, seven groups of people will be shaded on Yom al on the day that there is no shade except for Allah's shade. And from amongst them we mentioned was a young person that grew up and was cultivated and was raised in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's worship and obedience. And we spoke about the importance of, you know, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being upright while young. Uh, the difficulties that are there with that age of being young in terms of the pressure that is there to follow one's desires. And the young person has to you know, put extra effort in opposing that by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what elevates the young person. And that's why they have that station on the day of judgment where they will be shaded. On the day where there's no shade except for the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the end of that lecture, we mentioned that there is no better place to look for examples to follow than what has been mentioned to us in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For that reason, I want to utilize this opportunity to reflect, really. Reflect on a story that has been brought to us in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the stories that have been mentioned in the Quran are not similar to any other story. Because there is an objective and a reason for the stories that are mentioned in the Quran. That is, that we reflect upon it and take away and implement the lessons that have been brought in these stories. These are stories in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us events that has happened in the past, but it is not just for the sake of being entertained and to hear a story or to hear some historical information, but there are life lessons, important, valuable lessons that we that is required from us to pay attention, to reflect, to ponder, and to apply it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says قَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةً لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ That in, this, in these stories that have been mentioned in the Quran, there is amazing, amazing lessons. Right? It is for the, it's, it's, the objective is for us to reflect upon it. Right? For those who have understanding, for those who have intellect. These are not stories that are made up, Allah in the Quran says. So Allah is telling us, tell these stories and relay these stories so that you may reflect and you may ponder. 
relay these stories and tell these stories so that we may reflect. And this is a specific story that is specifically connected to our topic of discussion of being firm and upright while young. And this is a story in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in uh, Surah Al-Kahf, the story of those young men, those young people who went into the cave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Kahf, he begins early on in the surah by talking about the story of Ashab Al-Kahf or the people of the cave by mentioning it in summary. And then after mentioning it in summary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes into more detail talking about their talking about their story. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in mentioning their story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Am hasibta anna ashab al-kahfi wal raqimi kanu min ayatina ajaba. Have you, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa thought that the story of the people of the cave and the raqim, right, the plaque in which some of the information was there regarding them, do you think that this is from the great ayat that people are to be amazed by? Great signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that people are to be amazed by? And this ayah is mentioning Ashab al-Kahf and there is a question here. The question is, is that, do you think that this story is a great ayah from the greatest ayat? And the understanding that is taken from that, as Imam al-Sa'di mentions in his tafsir, is that the question or the istifham is to inform us that no, that's not the reality. There are bigger signs. There are bigger signs than this. The sign of the the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation being magnificent. But there's also amazing significance in this group of people and their story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and mentions it awal fikr to al kahfi. فَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا آتِنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمًا وَهَيِّئْ لَنَا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا رَشِدًا So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins informing us about these group of people and he summarizes the story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the story in summary, in brief. And this is from the asalib and from the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would tell stories in the Qur'an. He would say it in one place in the Qur'an, very short and very precise. And in another portion in the Qur'an, Allah will mention the same story but in a lot more detail, right? And the details that are normally given in the Quran with regards to these stories are for a purpose and an objective. Again, like I mentioned earlier, for us to reflect upon. So it's important for us to be to focus on the what has been mentioned in the Quran with regards to the qasas and the stories, so that we may ponder and that we may reflect. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Remember when these young people." went to seek refuge in the kahf, in the cave. These were young people who were living in a society and that society with which they were in was one where they were worshipping other than Allah. They were corrupt. They were engaging in actions that were corrupt. The greatest of the corruptions that they were engaging themselves in is worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no greater oppression than worshipping other than Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. These were a group of young people that realized the illness and the disease in the society and they came to a point where they were not able to do anything about it and they were concerned about their values and their beliefs. And they came to the conclusion that the only way for us to protect ourselves is to get ourselves out of this specific situation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding, do you, know, uh, do, you, do you remember this group of people, young people, who went to the cave? And I want, look what this ayah says, and this is very important for all of us to reflect upon. Young people especially, but this is for everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what did those young people say? These are young people, look at the fiqh and the understanding they had. They said, Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma. So first what they did was, they actually made a consolidated effort to get themselves out of that situation. They had to work hard. They had to make some serious sacrifices. Serious sacrifices. Because as some of the ulama of Tasir mentioned, these were not just any random group of young people. These were the children of those who were in charge. Some of these young people were royalty. Some of them came from families that were very, very wealthy. 
So why would they make this extreme sacrifice of living a lavish lifestyle to go into a cave? We'll talk about that inshallah briefly. But they made an effort to get themselves out of that specific situation and to enter into this cave. And once they made that effort and they put in the work, what did they do immediately? They made dua to Allah asking Allah's help. Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma. Grant us from what you have of mercy, from your mercy. Grant us your mercy from you. And guide us upright through this difficulty that we're going through. So they put in the work and they put in the effort and they took the steps to change their condition and the situation. And then they sought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's aid. And that is a strong indication at the understanding in the fiqh that they had. It is not enough to simply not do anything and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. That's not the way things work. I want to be a millionaire. I want to make money. I want to be rich. So I want to lie down in my bed and make sure my blanket is comfortable and I'm going to do nothing and the money is going to grow from the trees and fall from the sky. This is not the way the world works. I want to have children, but I don't want to go through the process of getting married. And, you know, uh, you know, having a spouse. And nah, I just want somehow Allah to bless me with children. It doesn't work that way. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the work. I want to be successful in school, but I want a degree so I can get a job. But I am not trying to sit for four years and do us do this and do that and work on papers. I, I can't do that. I just need that degree. It doesn't work that way. You have to put in the work to get the results. And on the opposite, you cannot be somebody who only relies on themselves and not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. Why? Because you will not be able to do anything if it was not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's aid and help. We make this dua every single day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his aid and assistance. Work hard and strive towards that which is beneficial to you and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and aid. And that's what these young people did. They put in the work and the effort and then they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us from, you know, to grant us mercy from you, O Allah. And to protect us and to aid us and to keep us firm and to guide us in this difficulty that we're going through, the sacrifice that we're making, the comfortable life that we're living in. We're doing it. Why? Because our, our values are more important. Our belief in aqidah is more important. The sacrifice that they made for the sake of their beliefs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, Once they went into the cave, huh? they went into the cave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused them to fall asleep. Here this ayah says, Sinina adada for many years. Later on in the story, when the detailed stories explain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it. Walabithu fi kahfihim talatu miyati sinin. Three hundred years. Talatha miyati sinin was dadu tis'a. The ulama explain that three hundred years they were in that cave asleep. This additional nine years is that the three hundred years is in the lunar count or the lunar calendar they were in there for 300 years as for the solar calendar they were in there for 309 years that is because after every 100 years in the lunar calendar an extra three years is added to the an extra three years comes out of that that is extra with the solar calendar so 300 years in the lunar calendar 309 years in the solar calendar they were in that cave they went to sleep and reflect upon that point for a second. With this specific situation that, that they're in, where they're so difficult, right? They're being chased. They're worried for their lives. They left their lifestyle. They're in a cave. They don't know where they're going. What's in there? They're concerned about where they're going. They're concerned about what's happening if somebody's coming after them. Yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His mercy, after they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for, for His mercy upon them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused them to sleep. And we see that at times in certain situations and mawaqif, when the person is in, in a situation where they're distressed and they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
for help and aid that Allah will cause him to feel tired. And an example for that is what we see uh, with regards to uh, the battlefield, for example. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the story um, of the companions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them feel tired. And they were lining up in the battlefield, facing off an enemy that was larger than them in numbers, but yet they felt nu'as. They were yawning and they were, they were feeling, you know, they, they wanted to take a nap and sleep. Is that a time and a place for somebody to feel sleepy? When you're literally in the line of battle about to face off with another army, normally the person will be scared. But that is rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep them firm. Allah put them to sleep as a mercy in, in, in protecting them. And not only that did Allah put them to sleep, but in the process of them sleeping, Allah was protecting them. As the surah, as the story mentions in detail, somebody lying down for 300 years, sleeping for 300 years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was causing them to turn over, to turn over so that the, the earth does not eat their body and their bodies do not wither away and they do not become harmed. Allah protected them throughout the hifz of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ri'ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was over them all this time. After they woke up, so as some of the Mufassirin explained, they didn't know how long they were in there. It seemed like between within them, some they were they, they were you know they were split into how many years were they actually in there. So they actually came out to figure out how long they were actually in there. In any case, here these ayat, Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions the story in summary. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala goes into the details of the story. And there's a few things that we want to mention from this story in reflection of the point that we're talking about here of the importance of being upright and protecting you know your deen while young and standing up for your values while young like they did these are a group of young people if they were able to do it then that is a lesson for us that we are able to do it as well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ نَبَعَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ we're going to tell you their story you know their, their, the true story about the people of the cave O Messenger of Allah Allah says إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ Look at this. Allah says they were young people that had iman in Allah. So first and foremost, Allah testified that they were believers. Allah testified that they were people of iman. And because of their iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testified for them, the iman that they had, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of that strong iman that they had, zidnahum huda. Allah increased them in hidayah and guidance. Allah increased them in hidayah and guidance. Imam al Sa'di he mentions that this hidayah and guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased them in was al ilmu al nafi' wal amal al salih. Beneficial, correct knowledge and doing righteous deeds. Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This iman that they had in their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the conviction they had in believing in Allah, in worshipping Allah, in sticking to their principles of whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to do, we do. Whatever Allah tells us to stay away from, we stay away from. Any type of belief that is in opposition to that, we reject. They stuck to it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased them in khair and goodness as a result of that. So number one, zidnahum huda. Allah increased them in guidance. Number two, رَبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and we strengthened their hearts. They escaped, they left, they were concerned, they were feared. What if we're being chased? What if we're captured? What if, you know, any harm afflicts us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthened their hearts so that they can be firm in standing up for what they believe. All right, the Allah making their hearts strong and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifying that they had iman and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increasing them in, in, in guidance. All of these things happened how or why I should say. Why did all of these things happen? Because of what they testified and said. إِذْ قَالُوا فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَنَّ دُعُوَ مِن دُونِهِ إِلَهَا 
This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testified that they were people of Iman. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased them in Hidayah. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he made their hearts firm and strong. Why? Because they stood up. Huh? They stood up and they said, Our Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. While their entire population that they were surrounded by were saying, other than Allah is the Lord, they stood up against that. And they said, no, Allah is the one that we worship. The one who is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. So first and foremost, what did they, what did they do? They affirmed Allah's Lordship. Allah, the one who created everything, the one who owns the heavens and the earth, he is the one who is the true Lord. Tuhid al-Rububiyyah. They established the Lordship for Allah alone. Tayyib. And then what did they continue and say? Lan nad'uwa min dunihi ilaha. We will not worship, right? Anyone besides Allah. We will not ask anyone. We will not call upon anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No other ilah we will call unto. No other one that is worshipped, these gods besides Allah will not call on to any of them. Tawheed al And this is the way of the Quran. Right? Because affirming Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the creator of everything and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the owner of the heavens and the earth and affirming the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is what necessitates the direct result of that is he is deserving of worship. If Allah is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and is a creator of everything that exists, then he alone is the one that's deserving of worship. He alone is the one that is deserving to be called upon. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And not anyone else or anything else. And that is the usloob of the Qur'an. That is the way the Qur'an enforces the concept of worshipping Allah alone. By proving that Allah is deserving to be worshipped by mentioning that he is the Lord. And that's what they did. Qalu, Rabbuna Rabbu samawati wal ard. Anyone that's worshipped besides him, if that's really what people are doing, anything that is worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we claim that, that everyone is anything besides Allah is deserving of worship, then that is batil, that is a lie, that is outrageous, that is wrong and evil. Brothers and sisters, young people, I want you guys to reflect upon this. This is a group of young people that stood up against what is normal in their society at that time. And what is normally, uh, what is a norm or what is a characteristic of young people is that they normally go with the trend. They go with what's happening in their population. They will not necessarily go out of their way to make an effort to stand up against what the people are doing for the sake of preserving their own values. And this is the reality of young people past and present. Whatever everyone is doing, we do. No matter how outrageous what people are doing are, no matter how outrageous the beliefs people have are, people, young people for the most part, tend to follow what's popular. And it takes courage. And it takes somebody who's persistent. And it takes somebody who really stands up for what they believe in to stand up and to be in opposition to that which is accepted by everyone. I mean, look at the young people today. Look at the reality of our condition, our, us, our young people today, and the time that we're living in now. Trends come and go so fast. Trends that make absolutely no sense. Trends that at time are really, really, you know, yeah, I mean, when you really think about it, you think, how can somebody with any type of intellect engage themselves in these types of actions. You'll see people doing it. Why? Because that's the hype of the day. That's the trend of the day. Anyone that does something outrageous, people want to do it. Just go online and look what's happening on social media. TikTok, Instagram. I mean, you, it blows your mind. Why are you doing that? People don't know. Why are you wearing that? I don't know. Everyone's doing it. Why do you want to look like this? Why do you want to say these things? Why do you want to do these specific actions? Because everyone's doing it. It's the cool thing to do. It's the hype thing to do. 
But the young person who at a young age realizes what is important for him, his values, his beliefs, that being to worship Allah alone and to stick to what is haq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in spite of what everyone says, in spite of what people would think, in spite of what repercussions will come towards that person. The fears, the concerns that I'll be ostracized and people will point at me. What is wrong with you? Why don't you be like everybody else? Well, well why do you have to why do you have to stand out? You, th you think everybody else is not Muslim too? What makes you special? Some people think like that. What makes you special? You think everybody else is not Muslim too? Come on, stay in line. Why do you why do you have to act that way? You know? And you and the person is doing really, they're trying to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these young people who, like I said earlier, came from a background of influence, came from a place where they were comfortable, they were living comfortably in life. Yet they made a conscious decision to follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them. They made a decision to stick to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. What is the truth? And that's what Iman does to the person. No matter how comfortable they're living, if what they're involved in is evil and the person has Iman in their heart, they will denounce all of that and they will want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said at the end of Surah Al-Tahreem, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِمْرَأَةِ فِرْعَوْنِ Allah gave an example for those who have Iman, the wife of Fir'aun. Fir'aun, the one who claimed to be Allah. The one who claimed to هَذِهِ مُلْكُ مِسْرَ أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِسْرَ Isn't the lands of Egypt mine? The Pharaoh who ran the whole country. This is his wife. So if he's the Pharaoh and the king, she's obviously a queen. Living the most comfortable of lives. Whatever she wants at her fingertips. Yet because of the Iman in her heart, what does she say? What does she want? رَبِّ بْنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Oh Allah, build for me a house in Jannah. She's not seeing what's in front of her. The, the palaces, the gold, the, you know, the pyramids, all of this. The, you know, all the, the entire, you know, kingdom that she is the queen of is not in her sight whatsoever. She's asking Allah, oh Allah, I want a house in Jannah. In Dakka, near you, oh Allah. And save me from Fir'aun and his actions. And save me from the people of evil. That's what Iman does to the heart. They're not looking at this world. They're not looking to fit in. They're looking to stick to the truth. These young people left their lavish lifestyle to go into a cave because their Iman, their beliefs was more important to them. How many of us are sticking to what we really believe? in spite of the wave that is coming towards us, that is in opposition to what we believe in. These isms and these beliefs, right? You know, we're being bombarded with the content of, we don't need to believe in Allah. We don't need to live our lives by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can do whatever we want. We're living in a liberal society. No one has the right to dictate to me what to do. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. I can live my life because that's freedom. That's how, that's what we are being pushed towards. But we are trying to stick to, no, we are servants of Allah. Whatever Allah tells me to do, I do. Whatever Allah tells me is right, is right. Whatever Allah and His Messenger tell me is morally haq and correct, that is what I believe in. And whatever Allah and His Messenger tell me is morally incorrect and morally evil, and that's what I believe in. We submit to that. Yes, people might look at you funny. Yes, you might be ostracized, but people it happened to people before. It happened to people before, just like this story and other stories as well. Then they began analyzing the reality of the society. This is our people, this is our society. What did they do? They made it a point to take partners and ascribe partners to Allah and worship. If they only brought proof, 
solid proof to prove their point. They're unable to do that. They're unable to do that. We are standing up for what we believe in, that Allah alone is deserved to be worshipped, and that whatever Allah deems to be morally correct is what we believe in. People are trying to enforce on us that no, whatever my intellect deems to be morally correct is what I believe in. And if you try to ask them for proof, prove your point, they can't bring anything to the table. They have no hujjah. The hujjah and the proof is with you, the Quran and the Sunnah. Why are we turning away from it? لَوْلَا يَعْتُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِسُلْطَانٍ بَيِّنٍ فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا huh? There is no greater liar. There is no greater volume. There is no greater oppression than making a lie against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Claiming that there is Lord besides Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So because of that, because of people, their people, worshipping other than Allah, they decided and they made a consolidated decision to leave and to go to the cave. وَإِذْ اَعْتَزَلْتُمُوهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَأُوا إِلَى الْكَهْفِ يَنْشُرْ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ رَحْمَتِهِ وَيُهَيِّئْ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَمْرِكُمْ مِنْ رَفَقًا huh? Since you distance yourself from the society who are worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, take refuge in a cave. This is them talking to each other. Let's take refuge in a cave. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, you know, come to the mercy of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to their mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, you know, facilitate and accommodate for the difficulty that they're going through. Look at that. They, they put their full reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not sitting here telling you, you know, if you're unable to leave, leave. Right? Where we live here and this is where we are. But what I am reminding myself first and reminding everybody who's listening and who will watch this is that we have to stand up firm for what we believe in. We have to stand up firm for our values. We have to encourage one another to stay firm in worshiping Allah and in following the Sunnah and in obeying Allah and His Messenger and deeming what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger to be correct and moral to be so. And everything else in opposition to that we reject. That's what we are supposed to keep ourselves firm on. And this is only one story. This is only one story. The details of the rest of the story and what happened can be referred back in Surah Al-Kahf. But this is only one story. And there are many other stories in the Quran as well as in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu giving us examples of young people in the past and how they stayed firm with regards to their beliefs. How they stayed firm when it, when it came to obeying Allah. How they stayed firm when it came to staying away from disobedience. Another story in the Quran that I will refer you to and I will ask you to go back and to read and to reflect is the story of Nabiullah Yusuf alayhi salam. Specifically, when Yusuf alayhi salam was after being sold into slavery and was in the house of that minister and what took place between him and the wife of that minister and the lessons from that story in Surah to Yusuf with regards to a young person despite all of the pressures that are there that, that, is, that was facilitated for him to engage in haram because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and him being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refused. So this is somebody who, you know, connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and overcame, fought that shahwa, fought it off for Allah's sake. And this is a story I mentioned here where these people were in a society where doubts were being brought towards them and they stayed firm. So these are the types of stories that we need to read, not for the sake of entertaining ourselves, but to honestly reflect and implement them in our lives. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be from those who reflect upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and implement it in our lives. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us of our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm and upright. Anything that I said that is of khair and goodness is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that I've mentioned that is of mistakes, evil, wrong, then it's from my own shortcomings and shaitan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from that. 
ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all and forgive us all. Jazakum Allahu khayran. Hadha wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'la. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.